Goodness me, check this out guys. Look at all of that. That is just absolutely crazy. Do you get more RF signals standing right underneath the tower like I am at the moment or further away? I'm up here on uh, top of Mount Wellington, which is our local highest mountain around here. And with that comes a couple of broadcast towers. So there's two here, they have multiple FM and uh, television transmitters on them and you can see those visually here on the tiny sa spectrum analyzer now the reason that i'm up here today is because i wanted to show you what happens when you're in such of an environment and you're using a radio such as this so this is the quanchang radio i've also got a whole pile of uh, other radios which we're going to look at here we've got the talk pod uh, i've got the baofeng uh, uv5r and I've also got some of my other handhelds like my Yaesu and also my Kenwood just to see how much interference you get when you're trying to um, talk. So uh, locations like this are also used for summits on the air. So sometimes you might have uh, one of these radios and you might be trying to use it from a summit and it might not work, you might not hear anyone and we're gonna show you the reasons why. So you can see here, this is my tiny SA. Now I've got my little antenna, the little telescopic antenna connected up here just at the moment. I do have an antenna on the roof, which we're gonna plug into in a minute, but I've got a little 20 dB attenuator on here because I didn't wanna overload the front end of this because I know that this place is an RF hot location. We've got the tower or one of the towers just over there and uh, we've got the other one just over there. So. Uh, I just thought just for safety's sake that I'd put that in there and I have offset it in the menu. So you can see that my marker's currently on uh, the, this is the FM broadcast part of the band, the lower part where you have all of your FM stations. And here you've got your television, which are the wide band signals that you can see here. And when you couple these all together, it increases the noise floor. The noise floor there, it looks like it's sitting at about minus 70 which is pretty high really, uh, especially considering that some of our radios can go right down to like minus 120, minus 110, minus 120. So uh, when you've got this kind of noise, it makes it very hard to pick out uh, signals. So I've just substituted my telescopic antenna for a whip that I've got on the top of the car here, which is just a little magnetic base whip. And you can see that those signals have come right up now. And there, look at those there, they're peaking at almost minus 10. Um, and I've got the, as I said, I've got this offset, so these values are, are real. So they're, uh, yeah, they're really peaking there, and uh, the noise is is really widespread. What we're talking about today, really, is we're talking about the selectivity of these radios. So selectivity is the ability to be able to receive the signal that you want and reject everything else. Now, um, these radios have been known to not have very good selectivity uh, due to the fact that they don't have a lot of filtering to filter out all of those other signals. So let's put that to the test now and we'll plug up each one of these radios and see if we can uh, key a distant repeater and see which one comes out on top. First cab off the rank is going to be the UV5R3. So I've got this currently set up on my uh, repeat or a local repeater that is literally, it's just over the back of the hill here. It's not too far away. So I've got my um, mobile radio here in the car to prove that I'm getting into it and that I can hear it. Now, if I actually open up this, this is how bad it is even here. Let's just have a look on. Look at that, S9 if I open up the squelch. So I am I can hear it on here. Let me just uh, show you. VK7HH testing. Okay, so I can hear it on that radio. Now, if I try it on the Baofeng, let's see what happens. Well, look at that. I got into it, but nothing nothing at all from the UV5R. That's the other radio that's keying up at the moment, but I'm not hearing it at all. VK7HH testing. Nothing. So the UV5R3, and this is a, again a problem. This, the repeater is like, I can actually see it from here. I can, I can physically see the repeater from here. Uh, it's probably about, I don't know, 5Ks away, and I can't hear it because of this bad RF environment on this radio. So let's try the next radio and see how we go. So for kicks, let's try the GT5R. Now the GT5R is basically a UV5R, but with extra filtering. So let's see if that extra filtering also works on receive. So this is gonna be a good test. Same, same sort of radio. Let me program this repeater in. Okay, GT5R, let's try that. this one. VK7HH testing. Nothing. 
nothing again. My other radio is picking it up. Of course, I've got an external antenna on that too, uh, but that's the Yaesu Mobile, which probably has better filtering. But the GT5, nothing. Okay, next radio is everyone's favorite at the moment is the Quan Chang UVK5. So let's try that same repeater. Let's try it, a VK7HH testing. Nothing, nothing on the Quan Chang. Uh, the Yaesu mobile radio again picked it up, but nothing on the Quan Chang. And of course I'm doing all of these tests, this is on a two meter repeater. So the level of RF on the VHF band here is much more than UHF. So we might do a quick UHF test a little bit later. So let's go to our next radio, which is the Torque Pod now. This is the A36 Plus. Frequency mode. Frequency mode, goodness me. One, four, six, six, five. Menu. This thing loves talking to me. VK7HH testing. Nothing. So I've got the squelch open now. Let me key it. But nothing. Nothing coming back. Those are sort of what I would call the cheaper radios. These are all like sub $40 radios. Let's go to something that's a little bit more expensive. Let's go to the Waxon. Uh, Waxon, Wotion. Uh, this is the KGQ10H. And let's see how this one goes. Okay, let's try this. Oh, hey, now that's different. Let's try it again. Okay, 7HH testing. So it's there, but it's very noisy. Listen again, VK7 hotel, hotel test. So that works slightly better and I kind of would expect that. This thing has a super heterodyne receiver and a little bit better filtering. It's a little bit more expensive for that reason. Um, so that kind of works. Very noisy though, especially compared to my uh, mobile radio, which is kind of like our, our test, um, our uh, baseline test. So. That's the Waxon. Let's now move on to something a little bit more expensive again. Kenwood THD72. This is a radio which I use for APRS amongst other things. Minus shift. Look at that. I can hear that perfectly. VK7HH testing on VK7RAF. So that's the big difference between a radio that's much more expensive, but it has just that extra filtering to notch out all of this RF. So let's move on to the last radio, my Yaesu VX8. So my, this is my, this is my go-to radio pretty much. This is my um, tri-band radio. So this is six, two and 70. Okay, seven HH testing. Oh, that's interesting. So I'm keying it, but I'm not hearing it. Okay, is my squelch set too high? I can't hear it at all. That's very interesting. So there you go. My Yaesu VX8 can't hear it either. So that Kenwood must have some really awesome filtering in it to notch out that um, interference. Now, let me just try off the little rubber ducky and see how we go. Ah, okay. So I can hear it now off the rubber ducky inside the car, VK7HH test. So that's worked now on the Yaesu. Let's go back to now the rubber ducky on the Waxon. There we go, VK7HH testing. There we go, so using the rubber ducky inside, that works. Let's try the torque pod, VK7HH testing. Ah, but the torque pod, no good, even on the rubber duck. VK7HH test, nothing. The Quan Chang, now, rubber duck. Okay, 7HH testing, nothing. And I'm definitely getting in because I can hear myself, VK7HH test, I can hear myself getting back to the repeater, but I'm not hearing it inside. Let's go back to the Baofengs, the Baofeng twins, the UV, no, we'll go back to the GT5R. Okay, 7HH testing, nothing. UV5R3, okay, 7HH testing, nothing. Now I'm gonna tune to a UHF repeater. Now this UHF repeater is a little bit further away. It's probably maybe 100 k's away, 
but it's a, quite a good signal from here because I'm up fairly high. So I've got the external antenna plugged in. Now, if you listen on my other radio, um, I'll key it up. I'll just call out VK7HH testing. So I got into it. That's my mobile radio. But this radio, I'm not hearing anything at all. So that's on the external antenna outside. Now, if I plug in the rubber duck again, but this time this is on the UV5R3. Okay, 7HH testing. There you go. I can actually hear it inside on the rubber duck, but I can't hear it with an external antenna outside. So the reasoning behind that is the front end overload. Front end overload is happening. So as I'm sitting here in the car with the little rubber duck, this antenna is not as efficient. It's not picking up as much RF from uh, the surrounds. I'm inside a car, so I'm shielded like with my, like kind of like a Faraday cage, I suppose a little bit. So the signals are not as strong as my antenna that is currently outside on the roof. Now to prove that it's not my antenna on the roof, let me just now plug in my antenna on the roof, the mag base, to my Yesu on the exact same repeater, which I did this test before on VHF and it failed. It works. So um, it's very, very interesting to see the differences in all of these radios and which ones are more sensitive, sorry, not sensitive, selective than others to uh, get rid of the um, all of the RF and all of the noise and all of the adjacent signals. And you can use a little tiny SA to uh, have a look and see what's actually going on and what's happening around um, the band or happening around just in general RF wise around wherever you're operating from. So I guess that that kind of demonstrates um, what can happen with these radios when you're in a high broadcast environment. Now, not everyone lives right next to a high broadcast tower, but you can notice that sometimes your radio might seem a little bit deaf. You might be getting out and people are hearing you, but you're not hearing them, and that might be the reason why. Okay, next I'm gonna show you the power of filtering. This is a two meter bandpass filter. I've done a review video on this before and how it operates, but essentially what this is going to do is this is going to notch out everything else except for the two meter band. So, okay, so I've got, I've got it kind of hooked up like this. Let's VK7HH testing. And there you go, it, it's receiving, look. So that's the power of a bandpass filter. Obviously this looks a bit ridiculous and you can't really carry this around like this, but it just shows you the effectiveness anyway of adding a filter in the, uh, in the line. This is that same spectrum, 80 megahertz right up there to 250. The 250 megahertz transmitters are completely gone. They're like right down below the noise. You could probably just see them there. You can still see the FM broadcasters, they're kind of there, but this is the effectiveness. <laughs> there's my, there's the amateur repeater that's just keyed behind me. So that obviously passes through, no problems at all. But all of these other signals are all attenuated. So that's the effectiveness of adding a filter in to get rid of the frequencies that you don't want to out of, uh, out of the spectrum. So uh, that's a good demonstration of what it should look like. You can see that the noise floor is all around about 70 all over the band. Oh, a couple of spikes there and then. That's interesting. I'm not quite sure what those spikes are, but uh, it's very interesting to see on a spectrum analyzer what is happening around. If you're ready to make a purchase on your next handheld radio, then I've done some reviews before. They will appear here in the end cards. Let me know in the comments below what you think and if you've had any issues like this before with your radios. I hope that it explains some things.